What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to talk about interface definitions and stub files in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to discuss Python interface definitions and stub files in this video today. And this is a concept or a feature of the Python language. It has been around since version 3.7. However, I myself discovered it just recently and I think it's quite interesting and has a lot of benefits for certain use cases. So you can go to the documentation actually if you want to read on uh, all the stuff that uh, is part of these so-called stub files, STUB here. Basically, these are files containing type hints that are only for use by the type checker, not at runtime. We're going to talk about what this means essentially, but how I stumbled upon those is I wanted to look up the definition for a function that I was using. I wanted to see what parameters it takes, what the types are, what the return values are. I wanted to look at some documentation and you can do that in PyCharm quite easily. For example, if I import now the socket module, uh, and I call some socket function like socket socket bind, even though this is not how you would call that function. Uh, I can now hold control and I can click on the function to jump to the definition of that function. And in this case, you can see that this opens up a PYI file. So a Python interfaces file, I think that's what the I stands for. And what we can see here is we have the class socket, we have a couple of functions, we can see the parameters, we can see the parameter types, we can see the return value types. Uh, but we can also see a lot of dots instead of implementations because in this file, we don't have any concrete code. We don't have any concrete implementations for these functions. So we have the bind function, we have the close function, the connect function. We know what they, uh, what parameters they take. We know what types these parameters should be, but there is no implementation here. There is no functionality that is uh, implemented for these functions here because this is a PYI file and the documentation calls these files stub files. So why would you need such a file? Because this is a way to separate the implementation from the uh, definition. So this is you can outsource the type hinting into documentation into a separate file. And for this, you have different use cases. So for example, you might want to provide to someone just the interface. So you want to give someone the explanation what your code is going to be doing, maybe because you don't have the code yet, but they need to do something with the final result already. So maybe you're working with someone you have to implement some package, but the package does not exist yet. You don't have the code yet, but you want to provide them with something that they could be working with so they can build their product based on your product before it even exists. So you can say, for example, there will be a function bind. Uh, it will take an address. It will return nothing. And then you can add a doc string here as well. And you can give it to them as a PYI file so that they can say, okay, I can use that function, even though there is no implementation. So of course the function won't work, but you can give it to them as a as an interface. That's what what DI stands for as an interface. Uh, this is one use case. Another one would be uh, that you want to give some abstract definition for something that doesn't have a concrete implementation. Um, or according to the documentation I've written down here on my second screen, what the documentation says, uh, it can make uh, sense for extension modules, it can make sense for third party modules, uh, where the authors have not provided type in. So for example, let's say we have a library uh, socket, let's say it's not core Python. And let's say that there is a bind function already implemented a close function a connect function. But in the original code in the original package, uh, there are no type hints, there is no documentation, what you can do is you can create a PYI file, and um, send it with the actual package so that you add the type hints and that you add the documentation to an existing module or to an existing package that is undocumented and doesn't have type hints, that would also be a use case. Uh, and then also it says it's useful for code that must be compatible with Python two and three. So we're going to use a simple example in this video today, and I'm going to show you how this works. For this, we're going to create a new package, we're going to call this for example, circle module. And in here, now we have an init py file, which is empty just so that we have a package here, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it circle dot py. And here we're going to just implement some very basic math functions uh, that have to do with circles. So we can say import math this is a little bit too large here. And we are going to define some basic functions here area, for example, given a radius, we're going to return, I think the radius squared times math.py. This is the formula for the area, then we could say also circumference, circumference based on the radius. I think this was two 
uh, two radius pi. So math.py. Uh, and then we can do some stuff like doing it the other way around. I'm going to copy paste this now because the code is not going to be that important. Those are just three more functions here. Uh, radius from area, radius from circ uh, circumference and circle info just returning um, stuff about or, or basically combining the area and the circumference into one function that returns a tuple. So two values, essentially, the code is not important, you can take whatever code you want. But this code is now undocumented, we don't have any type hints. So what we can do here is we can provide a separate PYI file with the same with the same name, this is important so that it matches uh, this file so that it's associated with that file, we need to have the same name, just a different extension. So I would call the file now circle.pyi. And here now, I mean, PyCharm automatically renamed this to py. So let's remove this, we want to have pyi. Um, here now we can basically copy paste the whole thing. Uh, but actually, we don't need the math module because we're not going to provide an implementation. We're just going to define that we have an area function that takes a radius a circumference function that takes a radius and so on. But we're not going to provide the actual implementation. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to just provide point point point. And we're going to do it for all these functions here. There you go. Um, and we're going to add some type hinting here as well. So for example, we're going to import here from typing import tuple, because here we have a tuple data type, uh, data type as a return value. Um, and then I can say here radius is going to be a float and it's going to also return a float this function here. So in this function, we just provide the type hints, we provide some documentation. Uh, I'm going to copy paste this here as well, because this is just too much text for for me to write it out here. It's not the focus of this video. Um, you can also find this on my GitHub repository for the YouTube tutorials. So you can copy paste it as well if you want. The basic idea is you know what type hinting is, you know what doc, doc strings are. Um, and we have them now in this separate file. So we don't have any code here other than the function signatures. We have here the doc string with some explanation of what's happening. And we have some type hinting. Now this file can be used now um, to explain this file. So for example, if I go into the main, uh, into the main file, I can just say from circle module, import circle. And then I can call a function, for example, print circle dot area based on a radius 10. Now, in this file here, I have no definition. I mean, I have the function signature, but I have no type hinting, I have no doc strings. However, I can hover over this function here. And it's fact fetching the documentation, you can see here, calculate the area of a circle with the given radius takes a parameter radius, the radius of the circle and returns the area of the circle. And you can see that the radius is a float, and the function also returns a float, even though this is not defined in this file, because it is defined in this file. And that's basically the magic of it. And again, what the use case for this would be is maybe I don't even have these functions implemented yet. Maybe I know that someone else because we're doing some I don't know, uh, some geometry project or whatever, someone is going to rely on that class, I don't have the code yet, because the class is super complicated. It's not just calculating area circumference and so on. It's very complicated. So what I do is I say, Okay, look, I'm going to give you a function area, you're going to enter the radius, it's going to be a float, you're going to get back a float, which is going to be the area of the circle. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. But this is what you're going to get, you can expect this function to exist in the future, you're going to pass a radius, you're going to get the area it doesn't work yet, but you're going to have this so I can provide this interface for them so that they can work with this. Or maybe uh, I'm the kind of person that uh, produces a module like this publishes this uh, publishes it and doesn't have any documentation, doesn't have any type hinting, which is unprofessional, someone else wants to come along and say, look, this person has a great module, but it's undocumented, there is no type hinting, let me provide this in addition to what's already there. So you can just uh, take this file, add it to this file. And then you have also some documentation without having to change the actual py file without having to change the actual implementation. And as I already mentioned, or as the documentation already mentions, this is also useful if you have something that has to be used with Python one, uh, Python two, actually, sorry, Python two and Python three. Because as far as I know, in Python two, you don't have type hinting. 
So maybe you don't want to add type hinting to the actual code. Maybe you want to keep this flexible, compatible with Python 2 and 3. So you cannot import typing. And because of that, you have to outsource the typing into a separate file, into a separate stub file. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.